This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring to you the biggest entertainment stories and definitely have lifestyle conversations. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have my co anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Luwash. Okay. It's popping. It's good. Hi. Guys, go. Hey. Why? Mm. What now? Why now? Come on, man. Let's, let's talk. Moving on, on real quick. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ife, your favorite work Christian businessman, mm. Kanye West, is mm. getting all the attention again as he reveals he got a vision to create Jesus Talk. Basically, having a version of TikTok for Christians as the content on TikTok is disturbing for him as a quote Christian father. In a post on Twitter, Kanye West said, and I quote, a vision just came to me, Jesus Talk. I was watching TikTok with my daughter and as a Christian father, I was disturbed by a lot of the content, but I completely loved the technology. We pray we can collaborate with TikTok to make a Christian monitored version that feels safe for um, young children and the world in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hello, you somebody. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right, so basically, when I saw the story, I said, okay, I like how you introduce him. Your favorite woke <laughs> businessman. <laughs> he goes, this is just a business, in my opinion. And mm. um, Kanye West is looking for every way to make money. He just signed a you new You think it's not a vision? Hmm? You don't think it's a vision as well? Mm -hmm. Vision 2020. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, we all know. Okay, if, 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 what type of vision could that be? You know, I listen to a lot of, um, on Sunday, I listen to a lot of um, Jesus is King album. And... Um, that album, he said a lot of things that even sounded like blasphemy in mm. gospel songs. Do you understand? Like, I think it was this Sunday that I actually paid her because I felt like I needed to listen to some gospel, you know, to be in spirit and stuff. And I you decided to, to listen to <laughs> Kanye West. And I was like, bro, what are you telling me? Like, this is not what mm. I've been trained as a Christian to listen to. So it's like he's still passing his own ideas and ideologies into whatever Christian message he thinks is passing, which is very, very wrong. So I would not tell anybody to put Kanye West as their spiritual father. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the bottom line of this yeah, whole conversation. So talk, talking about this whole Jesus talk, Thing. And then I started saying things like, imagine if you can actually have an hologram duet with Jesus. And I'm like, oh, he didn't even that. <laughs> like, you know, mm. you know the way you see the um, know you well thing with Simi mm. and um, Ladipo. Mm -hmm. Then you now see Jesus, and then Kanye. maybe you people are doing the Last Supper duet <laughs> <laughs> together or something. Like, I still feel like that's gonna be blasphemy. So mm. I don't think it's something we should even encourage. But mm. I saw because I went through the thread, I saw comments. And I saw reaction, and then someone else was like, "The truth is, if this man should put this out there, you see a lot of celebrities doing this thing. So, which is why I'm still going to look at the business side. So, introducing him as a businessman, not that's a man perfect. of God, that's good because this is good business. I think um, Kanye West's ego is the only thing that he's very true to. I'm mm. sorry, mm -hmm. even if he says tomorrow that he wants to give his soul to America, it's still mm. about his ego. If he wants to give his soul to Jesus, mm. I still see more of Kanye West's ego than I see of anything else. Even this Jesus thing, I feel like it's coming from an arrogant perspective that this is my new belief and I must mm. shove it down your throat. And it's about me believing rather than what I actually believe in. Mm. Um, and he loses me there every time. I think the same thing goes with his campaign and everything. Like, it's not about me wanting to serve the American government. It's that like Kanye West wants to be president and you must, like, deal with it, take it. And he puts himself too much into it. So I don't really like that idea. I think mm. what works for your family and works for you, if, can, if Kim Kardashian wants to tolerate you and, and live with you and take all of that, doesn't mean everybody else has to. Is there a, a need for you to, to sometimes have platforms for certain beliefs and communities and cultures absolutely mm -hmm. we have um pride apps we mm -hmm. have um tech apps we have financial apps you know mm -hmm. we have apps for other people on TikTok, uh, is that disturbing yeah, it know. can be okay yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. i haven't really uh, yeah no you don't you don't you need to go to that tiktok is, TikTok is very offensive the most offensive thing about very tiktok is that tiktok's um racist community yeah they, they are, their um, policies are not even against some type of racist thing so there's some things that you do on instagram very quickly your page will be taken down mm -hmm. if you copyright if you do anything no, 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 that's not okay, so if you do anything that now it's of offensive. course of very. course there's people that blaspheme it's, it's not even just um christianity sure, there's know. people who um, mock um islam though like Different mock the prayers yeah. they, they mock um, um what's it called george floyd's um, death thing mm -hmm. people were doing um 
the challenge, oppress the neck white people, and they didn't take it down. There's a lot of um, um, chaos about that, that they should take the videos down and close the accounts so of people having who were said that, racist you see the and stuff. Jesus talk? No. No. Don't. We don't. Well, okay. well, well. Because for him to say he's praying that they will come and collaborate with him, are you sure just, that there's no conversation just, ongoing already? I just wish. Remember the whole US I'm very sure there's nothing going on. Do you know on. what? Okay. Do you know what? This would be a welcome idea, right? If you're not putting, if you're not hiding behind religion. Just you want to do something, Jesus talk. It's just mm. another app for you to just, you know, explore your spirituality and all of that. Put spirituality, but don't put religion. Don't drag Christians into mm. it. Don't drag Muslims into and it. I wonder who, because you, for me, this is my vibe I get from Christians. So Christians, even on TikTok, they like to make videos for other Christians. This is what Jesus says. This is what Kineko is. So I wonder what it would be like if you're talking to people who already know what you're preaching. So it's like... Who's your audience? I guess I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know. I, I think I'll, 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 I'll like to do a duet to Jesus Christ on the, on the Last Supper, though. Huh? I'd like to do a duet with Jesus in the Last Supper. Okay. Probably I think we need to move on while we hope that um, Kanye West would take this vision, according to him, to, to the, the next, next level, right? Shame. Okay. So, Nigerian singer Simi is lamenting over the state of educational system in Nigeria. Mm. She said, quote, most of us can't even remember most of what we were taught in all the many years we spent in school. People have potential and talent not tapped into, quote, because it is not prestigious enough. Then they spend years learning something they don't care about forget everything right after and end up doing something else with their lives so what's the point who did this to us and of course that's from <coughs> Simi. so joining us um, to have this conversation virtually is a man who is passionate about not just education but the right kind and skill acquisition the ceo and founder of accurate africa bright jaja hi bright hey what up how What's you doing happening? Let's see you guys are having fun. Oh, yeah, we are, we are. But I mean, we need to, um, should I call this part, get serious now? Mm. Because um, when I read um, Simi's um, submission, your platform mm. came to mind, definitely. What was your first reaction when you saw that? Um, I think it's just something that I've been talking about for the longest time. And I'm just tired of talking about it because, I mean, it's, for me, I don't know if it's, if it come across, you know, to everyone, but for me, it's just common sense. It's literally just common sense, right? Um, we've been in this path for more than 60 years. Um, we've adopted the educational system that was given to us by our colonial masters. And we've, we've gotten independence and we're still, you know, um, in this path, knowing the fact that over the years, we've not gotten any positive results. Actually, every single year, it gets worse. And nobody's waking up in the morning to say, can we just decide and change the system and come up with something that actually works? Can we try something else, right? And nobody's saying anything. So for me, it's just something that I've always seen, and I've just, I'm just tired of talking about it. But for me, I would just, and that's the reason why I created Africa, I created Africa in the first place, is to just start creating structure that would help as many people who are willing to pay attention. And that's it. I like your take on this, Jaja, because um, left to me, I think um, Simi, Simi has bragging right over this because at the end of the day, she went to a private university in Nigeria. She probably learned something, but she's one of the best female musicians we have presently. So I think, um, don't you think that the educational system as well should infuse vocational craft into our four walls of education. So it's not just based on, okay, because I'm a science student, I have to study biology, I have to do this and I have to do all of that. Like, don't you think that it's time for us to start exploring the interest of our children and then still infuse it in the educational system? So even if you're a science student, you can still do all the stuff that, has, um, that is relating to art and not limiting it to just science. I think the first thing that we need to do is to is to redefine what education actually is. Because in our society, education is not, is not really just getting information that you can apply um, to get results. Education is prestige. Education is identification. Mm. It's, oh, I went to school. Mm. Mm, okay. Oh, I have a degree. All right. Um, oh, oh, I have a master's degree. Oh, I went to this university or that university. That is how that is how definition is, is defined in our society. 
is not focused on, oh, there's a problem here. Let's train people and equip people with the skills to solve that problem. That's, that's, that should be the focus. So the first thing is we need to redefine education. Education can not only be, let, be acquired in the classroom. Education, most of the young people who are doing amazing things, as, uh, uh, would I say, are streetwise. These are people who learn from daily sure. interaction sure. with people, with the society. Check each and every one of them. Most of the young people that are successful, me and myself, I'm streetwise. I learned from communicating and interacting and transacting with people every single day. Right, so we don't just need to bring in vocational education into our system. We need to prioritize it. Mm -hmm. We need to prioritize it because one, our structure and our system in Africa is is is, 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 is such a way that we need people who can take advantage and leverage on resources. Mm. And the, the 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 educational system that we've adopted, we don't understand that that has designed to keep us on one spot mm. and that has actually designed to, to cripple us. We don't, we don't see that. Mm. Because basically what the Europeans and, and everybody else want from us is our natural resources. And once we understand how to harness that, then they don't have access to that anymore. Mm. That's the reason why they came up with this whole system of you becoming a graduate and working in a bank mm. and working in, 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 in you know, or becoming a lawyer. Mm. How would you work in a bank? How, how would a bank work if right. there's before, no money in the system? Before we start What's the function of a bank if there's no money, if we cannot, you know, if, if, if we cannot leverage on our resources I, I, I and create wealth? I don't want you to trickle into colonization what? and neocolonization because that conversation will not even finish. Um, but yes, a good point that you've mentioned. Uh, for, fortunately for me, I've been able to see other societies where they have, in quote unquote, like your words, have prioritized vocation. Okay. So you see that from high school, you have two options, either to go to the regular university or go to TAFE, like they call it in some states and stuff, where it's vocation-based, or you learn. And it's still learning. It's not like as they'll come out and be uneducated. They're educated, can speak English and write, but then they're more skill-based. Um, skill and I'm, 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 I'm not trying to speak for you, but I'm guessing that that's your... Um, your, the goal as well, to be able to have that type of prioritiz prioritization in Nigeria. So my question is, really, is, I don't, I don't really see that happening, but um, if, if, if I was going to hold on to your hope, what would, we, what would it take to be able to start to make serious actions in achieving that where we can evolve with our education system to a point where we start to value and almost like industrialize and, and put structure into vocation as a occupation? Nigeria it's it's something that our, our government have to and I think I hope um, too that they are looking towards that but it's something that our government have to do um, there's a university in Taiwan I can't remember the name but it's one of the biggest hospitality university and what they teach there is everything that has to do with hospitality from um, bartender to um, chefs to um, just think about anything hospitality. They have the entire university is designed that way. Do we have um, a university for entertainment, which is one of the biggest things that is going on in Nigeria? The entertainment industry. Do we have a, a university for that, or do we have just one course that is literally undervalued in probably one of these universities? Do we have a university for construction that is focused on just construction? Do we have a university for hospitality? Do we have a university for just agriculture? We need to. We need to find a way to focus and prioritize the, the various sector and make sure that we align it with the natural resources in that location. Mm. For example, when you're thinking of the North, you should have some of the biggest agricultural system, educational system in the North. When you're looking at, when you're looking at, at, at the South, at the South South, you're, look, you're looking at how to leverage on the water, how to leverage on, on water technology and all of that stuff. That should be the focus. We should not always follow the trend. We should design ways and, and, and structures that would benefit the people, the system, and the available resources, right? And so the government has a role to play in changing those policies to create um, 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 favorable environment for private sector, even if they don't want to invest in that, for private sector to be able to invest in that. Now, while we're waiting for the government to do that, we still have the private sector to still engage in this. If we really want to curb youth unemployment in Nigeria, we have to prioritize technical and vocational skills trade. It's not especially starting from the mentality of, of society. Back in the days when we were growing up, if, 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 your, if your dad wants to 
motivate you to go to school. He will tell you that if you don't, if you don't go to school, you end up becoming a carpenter. Like being a carpenter is something wrong. Okay, yeah, um, right. That right. that society I, of perception has to change. Yeah. I like that you've gotten to that point because from what Simi said, she mentioned not being prestigious enough. And I think we had a conversation on this table as well where a guest said uh, most of the changes we might be wanting is something that would come in the next generation. That's the one coming after us. So in looking at that um, phrase, prestigious enough, how do parents, let me call them the new generation parents, begin to look at their kids to harness what um, their talents are and their strengths are and not exactly paint it as not being prestigious enough. In that way, they can actually help them to be who they want to be and um, maybe look at the skills that work for them. How, what advice would you give the new generation parents right now? First of all, I wouldn't blame the parents. Um, it's not just thinking, a po it's not think, thinking, a, thinking in a positive way has a lot to do with the content that you receive. And that has a lot to do with the reality. And I'm not going to deny the fact that the reality of technical and vocational skilled trade professionals is not, is not favorable. And that's the reason why no parents will want that for their kids, right? So I wouldn't want to start with the, how the parents see things. If the parents are willing to be part of the change, that's where I, I would start from because changing their mindset would not solve the problem, right? The problem here is who wants to be a mechanic? What's the life of those who are mechanics right now? Why would I want my kids to be that, right? Um, the only way you can see a chance, is, oh, those that are working in the bank have a, have a better chance to, to survive because you can see that reality. Now they are seeing, uh, a lot of them are going into entertainment now or, uh, or, or advising their kids to go into sports now because there's a little bit of hope in that space. So the first thing first is to create a structure that benefits the young people who are in this trade. And right. the people that can only do it, like you said, the next generation will be the one to benefit from it. But it will not happen if this generation, which is you and me, don't put action in place. Mm -hmm. The reason why we're not benefiting from it is because our parents did not do it. Mm -hmm. And the next generation would not benefit from it if we don't do it. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a thing of like what I told a couple of, 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 of weeks ago, which is, um, the, a failed generation failed the generation that's failing our generation. Mm. Now, are we going to let our generation fail the next generation, or are we, or are we going to end the, the circle? I think that, that's, so, that's where to this is on us session. to change that's that narrative. Mm. Thank you so much, Bright, for your contribution. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. So, my question would be Are you willing to be the change you want to see? This is not making it difficult to move to the next story, but should we move on? Yeah. I think we should just end it on this question. No, we can't, actually. Let's, let's just touch on this story before we go. Katy Perry explains why she never addressed sexual harassment allegations against her, saying she did not want to add to the noise or distract from the uh, Me Too movement. In 2019, a model claimed that the singer pulled his trousers down and exposed his genitals at a party in 2012. Later, um, a Georgian TV host claimed that Perry had inappropriately touched her and tried to kiss her without her consent at an industry party. If I'm my, I really want to get yeah, a yeah, take yeah, on that's this true. I don't yeah, know. What do you think? Uh, for, for me, personally, I, f I found it a bit pompous. Okay. I think if she... If the story was that she was accusing someone and then didn't want to make a noise about it, I would understand the humble brag. But you're being accused. What if it's actually true? true. Because that stance means that you're automatically saying that you're you're, innocent. you're yeah you're innocent. You're being you're being falsely accused. And I appreciate that. I hope that that's true. But you haven't really been vindicted by from that statement. So where is the you know the bra coming from to say that i didn't want to make a noise because it's so flimsy when we know that you haven't actually been proven otherwise because what if the other men as well decide to not say anything exactly what if i just like you know i can't be bothered you, so you for know, me that know, was a bit a bit off the um, thing is you just you just impressed me right now oh. because i had like a fire back at me you said Katy perry because i remember when justin bieber put out a statement justin bieber could have also decided to keep quiet and mm. be like oh i don't want to distract noise. people to mm. them yeah because it's flimsy and all of that but no worry this, the feminists are not biased it's the non-feminists that are biased they're the ones that come for us we don't come for people i'm just saying but yeah. go on go on i'm feminist now okay. so why are you <laughs> like <laughs> <yourself, I'm laughs> okay i'm a woke feminist let's put it that way what's that, what's that lie to, to yourself a woke feminist on. doesn't believe in the what's it called now 
the the sophacial feminism. We mm. go deep into it and know the different levels. If you're, if you're a woke feminist, me and my generation will never be woke feminists. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too woke for you. It's okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. We're saying the same yeah, yeah, we're saying the same thing. Mm. I'm too woke okay, for I'm you. Talk. So basically, what I'm saying is that <laughs> Katy Perry now, eh, she just she just forehand completely because I expected you to speak about it because this is a case of now a man is involved, a woman is involved. So mm. there's balancing. Gender. Do you, gender. Understand? Mm. Do you understand? So there's a balance. So it's necessary for you to address it. A man said you harassed them. A woman said you harassed her. So why would you say? It shouldn't even be. Uh, a, it shouldn't even I don't be want to motivated people. by gender. I don't think any human being, even if mm. it was a child or whatever, anybody mm -hmm. who says that you've assaulted you've assaulted me. And you see, my problem is that two two of them are from very very different worlds. One, mm. but the story is the same. It's almost like her character to play play and get into cross the line of like mm -hmm. let's exploit. Let me yeah. just exploit this person so for me if you if, if, even if i oh you it, it sounds like you're shaming the victims yeah. by saying oh my gosh i can't even be bothered with that rubbish so whether Except it's a man or a woman or an it it's, it me. shouldn't matter uh. whatever yeah, some people want to be addressed as it now you've not nobody heard. wants to be addressed as it ha no when you say i'm now a cat is what no, nobody is it, uh, even a cat is not. As, how do you address a cat We'll see. There, there, but, there are but, genders in class. Okay, that's how, <laughs> how, how, how this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And please send your opinions via WhatsApp to 090-6057-19 or Twitter at Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. My thank you, as always, to go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Yes, sir. And the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Please stay safe. Thank you.